What does Tesla Model 3 owner's manual say about charging and battery care? Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Joy. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I document my Tesla Model 3 owner experience to help new and future owners learn more about this car. If you find this video helpful and informative, please consider subscribing. Last week, I shared about my one-year owner experience learning about the Tesla Model 3 battery behavior. And as promised, this week I want to continue with that discussion and conversation about charging in particular. As you know, I cannot install a charger at home. And if you want to know why, you can watch this video up here. I have been receiving quite a bit of comments telling me that not being able to have a home charger is bad for your battery. And that when I go to supercharge, it will ruin the battery. In this video, I want to take a closer look at the Tesla Model 3 owner's manual on the page and section specifically about battery and charging. So we can all take a look at what Tesla is saying and what Tesla is not saying about charging and maintaining battery health. The section in the owner's manual that talks about battery is really a little over a page. I printed it out and this is it. The first point I want to cover is whether it's bad that I am not able to plug in my car at home. Here's what the owner's manual says. Model 3 has one of the most sophisticated battery systems in the world. The most important way to preserve the battery is to, in all cap letters, leave your vehicle plugged in when you are not using it. I'm gonna stop here because a lot of people, when they read this part, they immediately said, Joy, see, Tesla says that it is very important for you to leave your vehicle plugged in when you're not using it. So if you live in an apartment or a condo where you're not able to install a charger, don't buy a Tesla. However, a lot of people fail to read the entire paragraph and read this in context. After the sentence, it says, this is particularly important if you are not planning to drive Model 3 for several weeks. When plugged in, Model 3 wakes up when needed to automatically maintain a charge level that maximizes the lifetime of the battery. And then there's a note right below this. Note, when left idle and unplugged, your vehicle periodically uses energy from the battery for system tests and recharging the 12 volt battery when necessary. There's no advantage to waiting until the battery's level is low before charging. In fact, the battery performs best when charged regularly. Let's take a closer look at this whole paragraph and what it really means. What Tesla is saying is it will be great if you could plug in your car when you're not using it because a car would wake up periodically to do system tests and also to recharge the 12 volt battery. But there's nowhere on this page that says that if you're not plugged in, that this is harmful for your battery. And for myself, I am not leaving this car unattended and unplugged for several weeks as the manual states. The most I've had it unplugged is 12 days, so less than two weeks. And my battery has been performing completely fine with very, very little drain. You can check out the video up here. What Tesla is saying is, we're recommending that you plug in your car when you're not using it because over to the next section under battery care, never allow the battery to fully discharge. Even when Model 3 is not being driven, its battery discharges very slowly to power the onboard electronics. The battery can discharge at a rate of approximately 1% per day, 
though the discharge rate may vary depending on environmental factors such as cold weather, vehicle configuration, and your selected settings on the touchscreen. Situations, now this is important, situations can arise in which you must leave Model 3 unplugged for an extended period of time, for example, at an airport when traveling. In these situations, keep the 1% in mind to ensure that you leave the battery with a sufficient charge level. For example, over a two week period, 14 days, the battery may discharge by approximately 14%. Even Tesla is acknowledging that you may have to leave your vehicle unplugged for many, many days in certain situations. So for those who have argued with me saying that if I can have a charger at home, that I shouldn't own a Tesla because I have to plug in the car all the time when I'm not using it, it's right here. There will be situations and there will be people who cannot plug in their car every single day, especially when you have to go on a vacation or business trip like I do, then what are we supposed to do? Of course, the ideal setting to keep this car is to leave it at home in the garage plugged in whenever you can. However, in order for Tesla to reach mass adoption of their vehicles, they have to understand that there are people like us in urban areas who are not able to plug in and for people who have to travel, leaving their car at the airport without chargers to have the car to continue to operate when we return. And this is exactly it. So the question of whether or not this will harm the battery, there's zero warning on here. The only warning that Tesla is giving is never allow your battery to discharge to zero percent or go to completely empty and it specifically says here that it would damage vehicle components if you allow the battery to discharge to zero percent that is the only warning that tesla gives in the owner's manual about not charging your car for a long time and also I do charge my car periodically. I charge it once a week. So it is completely within the specs of what Tesla is saying here. The second argument I've been getting a lot from people is because I charge my car once a week, I charge it all the way up to 90% at a supercharger. And people have been saying, oh no, Joy, you shouldn't charge your car all the way to 90% because it's going to damage the battery. It's recommended that you only charge to 70 to 80% and don't go below 20%. It's bad for your battery. While this was true earlier in the days of Tesla, Elon Musk himself has completely changed his tune on how much you should charge your battery up to. Kim from Like Tesla YouTube channel did a video last year sharing that she saw a huge loss of range when she charged her battery all the way up to 100% before a road trip. And prior to that, she had been charging her battery up to around 70% every day at home. She reached out to Elon Musk on Twitter about her charging dilemma of why her battery degraded so much. Elon personally replied to her on Twitter saying, not worth going below 80% of charge in my opinion even 90% is still fine. Also, no issue going to 5% or lower state of charge. So there you go. It has been confirmed by the man himself that there's absolutely no issue charging my car all the way up to 90%. And even when I run it below 5% state of charge. On the other hand, is it okay for you to charge a battery all the way up to 100%? Well, it depends. There's a reason why Tesla recommends your daily commute charge all the way up to 90% either in the app or on the on-screen display when you charge your car to set the limit. But between that 90 to 100%, it says trip. Someone on Twitter 
reached out to Elon, saying that she had purchased a standard range plus Model 3, but her commute is 80 miles each way. She wonders if it will be harmful for her to charge her battery all the way up to 100% because she needs that range to get to her work and go back home. And again, Elon replied to her saying, it's not a big deal. Charge to 90% to 95% and you will be fine. At 100% state of charge, regen braking doesn't work because the battery is full. So car is less energy efficient. If you charge your car all the way up to 100%, make sure that you are going on a road trip immediately after. And if you do have to charge it above 90%, regen braking will be limited. So that's something to consider. The third argument, and this is a pretty big and controversial one, is, is supercharging bad for your battery? Will it damage your battery in the long run? Personally, I have not found concrete studies and research on comparing supercharging and in-home charging or level two charging on how much the battery will degrade over a period of time. So if you have found a study and research, please share down below. I am really interested in finding that supercharging study. Because if that is true and Tesla has not done their homework when they push out the supercharging network, they should really shut down all these superchargers because who wants to have their battery damaged, right? Here's what the user manual says about charging at high speed. The peak charging rate of the battery may decrease slightly after a large number of DC fast charging sessions, such as those at superchargers. To ensure maximum driving range and battery safety, the battery charge rate is decreased when the battery is too cold, when the battery's charge is nearly full, and when the battery conditions change with usage and age. These changes in the condition of the battery are driven by battery physics and may increase the total supercharging duration by a few minutes over time. This is the only place that Tesla has ever mentioned anything about supercharging and the effect it has on the battery. And frankly, the Tesla battery management system is so superior out there that they know how to protect your battery while giving your battery faster charge at the same time. And this is why when I shared the video of me supercharging at the new V3 supercharger, the charging session looks like this. It peaks up really fast to fill up your battery as much as it can, but up until the time where it says, okay, now you need to start slowing down to protect the health and the longevity of the battery, it starts to do trickle charge. My personal opinion is supercharging is not going to damage or ruin your battery if you do it, but don't do it so frequently because it is stated here that the supercharging duration will be prolonged by a few minutes over time when you do DC fast charging. So if I do this once a week, it's not really a big deal versus if you are driving Lyft or Uber and you do it often, you may see the effect of the battery degradation a little bit sooner than I do. In summary, over the last year, I have not seen or experienced any issues with my battery whatsoever. And in fact, my battery range is still right around that 310 miles EPA rated range. So I'm really happy with it. Hopefully I've set the record straight and maybe bust a few myths about charging. Once again, if you found this video helpful and informative, don't forget to subscribe down there. Give this a like, make comments down below, ask me questions, or share this video with those who you know that have questions about charging. Until next week, God bless you.